Glad you're with us today on Fox. Reed pops it up, not a deep kick. And it's Jordy Nelson on the run, making the grab and picking his way up to the 28. 13 yard return, and here comes the offense. And Troy, really, since the last time we did a Green Bay Packers game, things have solidified up front on the offensive line. And it's been relatively healthy, and the statistics are much better because of it. Well, there's no question about that. And, and we've seen Aaron Rodgers not be sacked near as much during that time as he had been earlier in the year. 48 sacks. He's taken on the season, but only seven over the last four games. Blitz from the Steelers. Packers pick it up, and Rodgers throws it away. And Aaron Rodgers had to do good work to get rid of the football and avoid a sack. Ferrier was coming on a blitz. Ferrier is the left inside linebacker as this Pittsburgh defense is a 3 4 same for Green Bay and the architect of this defense is the great Dick LeBeau who's a finalist for the Hall of Fame and he'll find out if he is in he should be the day before Super Bowl 44 in February. Second and ten. Rodgers slings it high and way too high for James Jones. Two incompletions and Aaron Rodgers has to peel himself off the grass here at Heinz Field. Two plays and twice James Ferrier has come on the inside blitz. This time they also brought number 94 Lawrence Timmons who's able to take Aaron Rodgers to the ground. On first down he was able to avoid the pressure get the ball out. But the Steelers on both first and second did a nice job in timing it to where they hit it on the dead run. It's third and ten. Rodgers with time throws and off the hands of James Jones. It's a three and out. Well we saw Brett Kiesel the defensive lineman for the Pittsburgh Steelers one of the things that the Steelers like to do a lot like what the Packers like to do defensively is move people around and the Packers do a good job up front of blocking it up and they had a chance outside of James Jones for the first down just failed to connect. Well that didn't take very long for the Green Bay offense three and out and on the return it's Devon Logan. And good starting field position for Pittsburgh at the 40 Derek Martin on the tackle a 12 yard return and the offense for Pittsburgh if you look at the stats and this is why stats can be misleading and why most of the time we try not to pay too much attention to them at the end of the season Troy Pittsburgh is looking at maybe a 4000 yard passer two 1000 yard receivers or thousand yard back. Overall they are number nine in total offense but who cares they're six and seven. Yeah I think in addition to that is they just have not been consistent. In fact that's been the case for this entire Pittsburgh team. They've lacked consistency week in and week out. They'll put up a big number offensively one week and the next week like last week against Cleveland little over 200 yards. Yeah they were awful at the Browns. Here is one aired out for Mike Wallace. What a start. Touchdown Pittsburgh. Mike Wallace the young rookie out of Mississippi has had a heck of a rookie season he's got great speed in fact Jared Bush did not anticipate him being able to just run by him did not respect the speed that Wallace has it was off of play action and Bush did not get caught looking into the backfield he just simply was able to run right by him. In fact Wallace even had to hold up and wait for that one to come down Roethlisberger not enough arm to even hit him in stride with it but yet he was so far in behind. Bush he was able to get the touchdown that is the longest pass play for a completion by the Steelers this season and while Mike Tomlin's group hasn't gotten anything out of last year's second round pick Lima Swede who's inactive today 
They get touchdown number four on the season from the Blazer. Mike Wallace who got behind Bush. Yeah it was play action away but Jared Bush as I said he was man to man on Mike Wallace. He was not looking into the backfield. He did not see the play action fake there by Ben Roethlisberger. He just simply didn't respect not knowing the kind of speed Mike Wallace has. And we were talking to Bruce Arians the other day and he said Mike Wallace may in fact be the fastest player on their team. Mike McCarthy went right to Jared Bush. If you realize that the Green Bay Packers have three corners on IR, they lost Pat Lee and Will Blackman early. They lost Al Harris, all on injured reserve with knee injuries. And so that depth has been tested, and everybody has moved up a spot. Some guys have moved up two, and Jared Bush was just burned for a 60 yard touchdown by Mike Wallace. And a good start by the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. As they try to get back to the 500 mark at 7 and 7. Packers had it for 32 seconds, went 3 and out. Steelers for 10 seconds, and went one play, 60 yards, and a touchdown. Jordy Nelson on the return. Trying to give the Green Bay Packers a better starting field position this time and while he does for the moment a penalty flag is on the field. We have a new audience joining us. There's Troy's glamour shot. <laughs> and if you're just joining us you missed a three and out by Green Bay and then on the first play from scrimmage. During the return holding number twenty nine of the return team. Ten yard penalty first and ten Green Bay. That's Derek Martin. Started to say on the first play from scrimmage like the Packers had last week at Chicago a 62 yard touchdown run by Ryan Grant. Here's a 60 yard completion for a touchdown to the rookie Mike Wallace. Well and the thing that the Green Bay Packers did not want to have happen they understand that they're coming in against a wounded dog and a team that had lost five in a row. They, they really did not want to give them any chance early in this game to give them any hope that they could win this game and yet first play from scrimmage the, the Steelers go the distance for the touchdown game break coming your way as play action from Rodgers who started the game 0 for 3 has driver deep and he can't make the catch and penalty flags before the snap false start number 71 offense five yard penalty Second down. Starting right guard Josh Sitton, guilty of the false start. You talk about Tennessee getting back to 500, and now they, they've got a big ball game on Christmas night uh, against the streaking hot San Diego Chargers. Meanwhile, the Chargers, they've won eight straight. They're 10 and 3, and they take on Cincinnati as we play here in Pittsburgh. And I would imagine the weather's a little different out in Southern California. 30 degrees at the start of this game. Second and 15. Another blitz and over the middle. Pass complete to Finley, who gets 14 yards. And Rodgers is having trouble getting up. He got smacked again. Uh, he got hit about as hard as I have seen. In fact, I'm a little surprised there was not a penalty on that. It looked like it was helmet to helmet contact. You're going to see it right here. They bring the fire X blitz again, and it's Timmons who mm. comes free. Actually, a good play there by Lawrence Timmons, but he got rocked pretty good. Actually, it did look like there was a little bit of helmet to helmet there. Take a closer look at it, and you know he comes in and. They have now run that virtually on every snap. And they've not been they've had a free blitzer each time and most of the time it's been Timmons. Third down and one six straight pass plays and this one's incomplete for Jermichael Finley. And so fourth down and I think Aaron Rodgers is saying hey I just got hit in the chin by Lawrence Timmons why no flag. And here's that second down play. You know Timmons comes in right there. He actually begins the contact in the chest and then the helmet slides up and there was helmet to helmet but it was not initiated helmet to helmet and I guess that's what the referee saw there John Perry and, and did not make the call. Kapanos hits his second of the day and a fair catch called for and taken in by Stefan Logan. 
a crisp late afternoon early evening here in Pittsburgh and Roethlisberger is one for one. They've been less than two minutes off the clock in this game. There have been seven plays run total in this game and still no running plays. That's Heath Miller. And a good start for Roethlisberger. He's thrown for 84 yards now on two completions. That was 24 to Miller. And this one again is off play action. We get to the linebackers. You see A.J. Hawk and Nick Barnett. They come up to bite on the run fake, and it allows then Heath Miller to have a nice open seam in order to catch that ball. That's catch number 62 for Heath Miller, one off the franchise record for a season. Another pass and an incompletion right through the hands of Santonio San Holmes. The defense coordinated by Don Capers for Green Bay is ranked number two overall. They're two against the run. They're three against the pass. And Dom Capers was the defensive coordinator on Bill Cowher's first staff that he put together here in Pittsburgh in 1992. Well that was a quite a hire that Mike McCarthy made this offseason when he was able to bring Dom Capers in and the changes that he's been able to make and and then implementing the three four scheme as you said has made a real difference for this club this year. Well it's coming from Green Bay Steelers pick it up and down the sideline it's Holmes and it's not there. Good coverage downfield by Tremont Williams and it's third and ten. You know it's interesting talking with with Mike Tomlin the other day and asking him you know what do you want exactly what do you want the identity to be for this offensive football team we used to know what that was and anytime you talked about the Pittsburgh Steelers you knew that they were going to be a running football team a physical group they've gotten away from that a little bit but what Mike Tomlin said was I want us to be balanced and uh, they've been anything but here in the early going same can be said for the Packers in two possessions haven't run the ball yet. Third down and 10. And Roethlisberger gets away from one tackler and will not have enough for a first down. Seven yards by Big Ben. Nick Barnett on the stop, and it's fourth down for Pittsburgh. And that's been the real problem for this offense during the, the last five games is that they have just not been very good on third down. In fact, overall, all season, they've not been all that great. But during the last five games, converting only 28%. On third down. Sepulveda hits the punt. Jordy Nelson with a fair catch. Out near his 12. Take a look at some of the early game headliners. Vince Young is playing so well, obviously, and the Titans are red hot. Now they're now seven and seven. Jerome Harrison, 286 yards, three touchdowns. In his fourth year, a fifth round pick out of Washington State in 06. And Andre Johnson, another big day. As the Texans won in St. Louis and the Rams are right now in the driver's seat for the first pick in the upcoming draft. Here's Ryan Grant first carry of the day and the feature back for the Green Bay Packers gets two. Yeah Ryan Grant coming off a good game last week against Chicago 137 yards of course one of those included the the 62 yard run that he had to open up the game but the two games prior to that against Detroit and Baltimore they did not run the ball nearly as effectively and and they're going to have a hard time running it today if the Steelers play the run anyway any way like they have all year long. And off is to Grant over the right side and Grant picks up three. So third down coming up while Roethlisberger and the Steelers offense has struggled on third down the top rated third down quarterback in the NFL is Aaron Rodgers. And that's not good news for the Packers is Ryan Grant having a tough time. And he looks like he got the wind knocked out of him as he's trying to gather himself on the sideline. It's third and five. Down the middle for Jennings. What a perfect throw. Jennings still going inside the 20. And the Packers have an answer. 
83 yards for Greg Jennings his fourth touchdown catch of the season. Well you talked about Aaron Rodgers leading the National Football League on third down pass and he had 11 touchdowns prior to that now he's got 12 and they are able to get pressure on him with James Harrison but Rodgers steps up and floats this ball in there just perfectly but Tyrone Carter which has been the case throughout this year another big play given up by this defensive secondary of the Pittsburgh Steelers and it's on a play like that Troy that you think about the absence of Troy Polamalu about an 83 yarder to Greg Jennings longest career reception for Jennings career long pass for Aaron Rodgers and for Greg Jennings 13 of his 28 career touchdowns have been 40 or more yards right down the middle of the field and Tyrone Carter missed a chance to make a play while Paul Amalu misses his ninth game of the season on the return it's Burnett and just a 10 yard return Martin on the tackle back to the touchdown. Yeah well Chad Clifton might have gotten away with one right here on James Harrison you see the left arm there up against the neck could have gotten a hold call but right in the middle there you see Greg Jennings they give him a free release off the line Tyrone Carter you mentioned it Joe I mean that's a knockout punch right there if you want it but I think he thought the ball was going to be overthrown and he was going for the interception and then while doing that he just simply overruns Greg Jennings and fails to make the tackle. So the 7 7 game. And the handoff to Mendenhall. And last year's first round pick, Richard Mendenhall, gets nothing. One small point, maybe it's not a small point, nothing small. When you're talking about the Packers to fans back in Green Bay, the change has been made for the Packers with the holder. Matt Flynn is no longer the holder, Kapanos is, and he was fortunate to get that snap handled and the ball on its end and up in the air for the kicker Mason Crosby who struggled to knock it through to tie this game at seven. A lot of teams around the league blaming their kicking problems on on the holders. I think Nick Folk is out of guys to blame the kicker in Dallas. Here's Heinz Ward and Ward is good for four. Brad Jones on the stop and here is that snap on the extra point which is taken for granted so often. Well he does a good job clearly of, of getting it down and you know, I thought what Mike McCarthy said about that was was good and that you know Matt Flynn had been the holder but Kapanos you know those guys they spend time together throughout the week and it's just so much easier for those guys then to work on the mechanics of the hold and the snap and kicking the ball and all that to where Matt Flynn has other responsibilities. On third down and six Roethlisberger over the middle and there's nobody tougher in this league than Heinz Ward. Ten yards and a first down for the Steelers. Catch number 78 on the year. Uh, that's vintage Heinz Ward right there. They go trips left. They got Heinz in the middle and then he's going to work the middle of the field. No pressure in the middle here on Ben Roethlisberger. He's able to sit back. They've got two defenders which they typically do on Heinz Ward. They know he's a guy that they want to get the ball to. He's the one who moves the chains but Ben puts it on him perfectly. On first down handoff to Mendenhall. Bigby was the first to hit him. And Richard Mendenhall picked up three. The story with Mendenhall, he didn't become a starter until week four. Last year had a broken shoulder that he suffered in week four, so he was shut down in his rookie season. But he came in with 895 yards in the 10 games since he became the starter, which is a 1,400 yard pace for a full season. Well, he's given them a little juice, and he had a little growing up to do early in the year. and. You know when he got his opportunity once he was sat down against Cincinnati came back and got his first start against San Diego he's been he's been running well ever since. Second down and seven and over the middle it's Heath Miller. And Miller with a big gain of 14 yards and a Steeler first down. Well <laughs> you've got the rookie B.J. Raji. He's in the middle here he's going to be dropping out. And he's going to then be trying to pick up 
as you see he's going to be trying to pick up Heath Miller as he comes across now he's not locked up in man coverage but when he goes that way you know there he goes and he's got to try to somehow take care of him and <laughs> I'd be a little concerned if I was the Steelers and B.J. Raji their nose tackle was able to stay stride for stride with one of their better players on the team. Yeah. Black 20. On first down Roethlisberger sets up and throws and penalty flags as Woodson went for the pick. Pass intended for Santonio Holmes and this one's against Charles Woodson. Pass interference. Number 21. Defense. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Well we see Charles Woodson he's up in press does not get his hands on Santonio San Holmes off the line of scrimmage but once they get down the field he does and that's one of the areas because the Green Bay Packers do like to play aggressively they do like to lock up in man coverage that a lot of these offensive teams coming into the game they want to take some shots and believe that they then can get the pass interference call like they did 17 yard penalty. The third penalty of the day for the most penalized team in the NFL Mendenhall almost broke free picks up two. Second down and eight Mendenhall broke through one tackler and picks up four for Deshaun Jackson eight touchdowns or 50 or more yards last week a 60 yard touchdown pass and a 72 yard punt return at the Giants. He is a major reason why the Eagles are on top in the NFC East and what a big win last night for the Dallas Cowboys a seven point win at New Orleans their perfect season is over and Tony Romo 312 passing yards could not have played any better. Well a Cowboy team that went from being a December punchline to now a team that I, I think people look at a little bit differently as far as what they might be able to do if they're able to hold on to that number six seed and get in the playoffs. It's third down and four Roethlisberger with a pump fake throws and hits Ward for a first down. But a penalty flag is on the field and it's against Green Bay. That's the indication. Another hold there in the secondary on Green Bay. Prior to the pass holding number 21 defense that penalty will be declined. The result of the play first down Pittsburgh another one on Charles Woodson you know Heinz Ward they get used to this I mean he's trying to stay alive he sees Ben Roethlisberger scrambling he starts like he's going to go to the end zone he comes back around and in talking with Heinz Ward I asked him if there were any specific rules that he and the receivers had when Roethlisberger got out on the edge scrambling he said not really we just do our best to get open but because he scrambles so much. Sometimes we fail to run our routes as precisely as what we should anticipating the scramble fake the handoff Santonio Holmes with Heath Miller in front to the one that'll set up a first and goal they're going to mark Holmes out at the two and it's first and goal a 12 yard catch for Holmes yeah, get it out to Santonio San Holmes quick and get a blocker out in front of him with Heath Miller on Tremont Williams and and get as much of it as you can and you know, I like what Pittsburgh has done here they have been balanced on this series moving the football they haven't had a great deal of success running it but they stuck with it Green Bay of course the number two run defense in all of football. Here's Mendenhall stayed after it and has the touchdown. Survived a hit from Nick Barnett and spun his way in for six. Yeah, watch Nick Barnett. He hits it and does a good job. He just he fails to wrap up right there in Mendenhall. And this is what Mike Tomlin was talking about. Mendenhall is a powerful man and he moves piles. And so even though Barnett had a free look at it and got the hit on him, he's able to bounce that and still get it into the end zone. Mendenhall with his seventh touchdown of the season. There's the drive, and it leaves 3:47 left in the opening quarter here in Pittsburgh. We've seen a ton of action, 21 points, 
And Green Bay about to get it back. Jordy Nelson set to return it. Foot of Jeff Reed, who has only one touchback all season. And this won't be number two. Nelson from about the 14 yard line. Good return by Jordy Nelson. On first down, Ryan Grant. Full head of steam gets six. Casey Hampton on the stop, and it's Casey Hampton who anchors this 3 4 defense right in the middle at the nose tackle position. Yeah, and you better have a big guy like Casey Hampton when you. When you run the 3 4 scheme that Pittsburgh does that they've had so much success with over the years in fact the Green Bay Packers when they went to the 3 4 scheme this year they drafted B.J. Raji with their first pick because they knew how valuable that position would be. Another blitz quick throw and the pass incomplete for driver. William Gay was closing in on it defensively for Pittsburgh. It's third and four. Well, they've had a couple opportunities now. Aaron Rodgers has with these receivers, and they've just not been able to make the connection. Ball just a little bit out in front there of Donald Driver, him not able to reel it in. But we saw there on that first possession also a couple of open receivers, and, and Rodgers was a little high on some of those. Third down, Rodgers slings it, and the pass is dropped. That's Driver again. Right into his gut and then down to the grass, and it's fourth down for Green Bay. Well, Dick LeBeau likes to give you a lot of different looks, and inside they bring the linebackers once again, and it looked to me like William Gay, if he had been playing the ball there, he could have undercut that one and taken it to the house. Yeah, I said into right his, there. I said into his gut. It was the right arm of William Gay that got in there and broke it up. Good play. Yeah, he kind of throttled it down a little bit, but if he had stayed on the move, I think he could have had an easy interception there. Capinos hits it. Stefan Logan on the return gets to the sideline and then gets knocked out. On first down, this is Santonio Holmes and the rookie Brad Jones wasn't fooled at all. A loss of two, and when you come back home and you have all those tickets and passes to leave before the game, it's hugs from everybody on the sideline. And this is a special moment and, and Mike McCarthy said as much. Yeah. Yeah. We had a chance to visit with him the other day and, and he was excited about coming home. And excited about having his family here to be here with him on his homecoming and. He was he was really looking forward to it good for him. The last shot was Joe McCarthy Jr. Mike's father. He gets to share this moment with his 46 year old son second down and 12. A blitz. Green Bay doesn't get there and Heinz Ward makes the catch smacked by Jarrett Bush after a gain of seven. How about that. It looked like that, that Monday night football graphic when the helmets collide <laughs> was, they couldn't separate. Them. <laughs> That's Ramon Foster who had somebody's helmet stuck to his. <laughs> OK. It's Colin Jenkins. A little stare down here. You want to take yours off or should I take mine off? <laughs> you take yours off, Colin. It's third down and five. Timeout Pittsburgh. So much movement defensively for Green Bay these days prior to the snap and Roethlisberger trying to figure it out had to spin around and take a timeout. We look at the division leaders in the NFC New Orleans now 13 and one with their loss last night. Minnesota plays tonight. Take on Carolina Philadelphia is playing as we speak and leading the 49ers 7 3 and Arizona they won today they're nine and five the wild card leaders. Green Bay at nine and four Dallas nine and five. These two teams certainly have their playoff hopes well within their own hands and then in the hunt the Giants at seven and six play tomorrow night. 
And San Francisco is still breathing. Well, I think Green Bay watching that game last night was anticipating that they would be playing this one, you know, for a spot in the playoffs. If the Cowboys had lost and they win here today, then they're in. If they win today, now they're waiting to see if the Giants would then lose and they're in. But it got a whole lot interesting for that number one seed with the Saints losing last night. Third down and five. Roethlisberger is hit from behind. Lost the football. That was the rookie Matthews. And Green Bay takes over. Matthews, who leads this team with eight sacks, took over as a starter week four. And it was Matthews who forced it and recovered it. Well, you're going to see him off the edge. This is now his fifth sack in just the last four games. He just uses a speed rush right behind Starks and comes in behind. And, and Ben, who's got pretty good protection up inside, if he's able to step up, if he's feeling Matthews coming in behind him, then he's got some room. But he does not. I tell you, Clay Matthews has had a heck of a rookie year. I mean, this guy has come in from the University of Southern California as a rookie and made a real difference in this 3-4 scheme. And there's so much asked of that position, not only playing the run, but then also being asked to be a Rudge Escher or, or a Rudge an edge rusher that is, play. you know, in their the sub packages, and he's pass. been outstanding. A challenge from Tomlin. After reviewing the play, the quarterback had possession of the ball with the arm going forward prior mm. to it coming loose. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. Fourth and five on the left hash, 34 yard line. Pittsburgh is not charged with a team timeout. 114 on the game clock. Well, you and I are in agreement. John <laughs> Perry isn't. And Ben Roethlisberger was surprised when the call was made. Wow. Yeah, well, and even when the coach came over to talk to him about it, he's saying, gosh, and, you know, Clay, of course, he thinks the opposite, but. You know they dodge one there because now yeah even though it's fourth down at least they're able to advance the ball with the punt and not give the Packers the short field. Well we can I just disagree with the call either the ball was out before the arm was going forward but call made by John Perry and it's a worthwhile challenge by Mike Tomlin but here's the punt by Sepulveda and he shanks it off the side of his foot takes a decent bounce for Pittsburgh and. The ball is at the 27 yard line of the Green Bay Packers. And so a big change in field position after the overturned call. We welcome you back inside our booth. And uh, we talked about it coming on the air that Pittsburgh, even though they're under 500, they were a dangerous team for Green Bay to play today. And it certainly looks like that's holding up so far. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, Green Bay knew that coming in. I mean, this is a team that, you know, sometimes you tend to look at it as far as what has happened in recent weeks, and you say, well, this team's just not very good, but, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. A number of playmakers for this Pittsburgh team, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. That challenge in the overturn saved Pittsburgh 46 yards of field position, and now this one is incomplete in the direction of Greg Jennings, although not close to him at all. You know Aaron Rodgers he's off to a tough start in this ball game he's, he's got the long touchdown throw but he's only had two completions now in his first 10 attempts and he's been hit a number of times in addition to that. Backers have had it four times three three and outs and then the touchdown throw the third play of a possession 83 yards to Jennings here's a completion that goes nowhere Jennings makes the catch and out there's Timmons Donald Lee the tight end rather not Jennings and it's Lee making his 34th catch of the season it's third and ten and this Green Bay Packer offense save for one play hasn't been able to do anything. Well they went to a quick passing game right there trying to keep the hits off Aaron Rodgers. They run the slant in behind it a flat route with Lee and and Timmons in great coverage and makes the play. Third down and ten Rodgers throws and completes that's driver. Donald Driver into the open field and now down inside the 25.
A 49 yard completion to Donald Driver sets up first down at the Steeler 24 and makes that win on the challenge by Tomlin academic. As Rodgers sets up backs up outside the pocket so he throws it away. Back to the 49 yard completion to driver. Well there was little doubt as to where Aaron Rodgers was going to go with the football. You can tell I mean he's staring it down from the time he got to the top of his drop and inside it was just zone zone coverage and they give him a free release off the ball. Donald driver runs the dig route and Aaron Rodgers puts it on him and at the end of this is when James Harrison drives him into the ground and looks like he might have a word or two to say to him. There at the bottom James Harrison hasn't had the big splash plays this year that earned him defensive player of the year a year ago but he is still a force. Rodgers has been hit five times second down. Backing up as he throws it that's Jennings on the completion. And Jennings gets eight Timmons downfield to make the stop for Pittsburgh. Yeah you know, that was Aaron Rodgers fifth completion today but. Two of those have gone for 132 yards. And for those that have been following the Pittsburgh Steelers this season, they're all too familiar with the big plays that they've seen in this ballgame. Another third down for Green Bay. And inside the red zone are the Packers down by seven. Handoff is to Jackson. And Jackson is driven backward as he got to the 15 yard line. A gain of one. Tyrone Carter, the first player there for Pittsburgh. And Tyrone Carter, it looked like Jackson was about to bounce that thing out and maybe pick up the first down, but Tyrone Carter doing his Troy Polamalu impersonation was right there to finish him off. And it brings up fourth down. Fourth down and a yard, and the field goal unit is on for Green Bay. And a 34 yard try by Crosby who has struggled. Good snap good hold and the field goal is pushed wide right. Another miss by Mason Crosby who's now 24 of 33. For the season he's missed seven of his last 20. And it's still a seven point game. Steelers have it up 14 7 and a flea flicker Roethlisberger nowhere to go with it so he dumps it off to Mendenhall and Mendenhall who has the ball in his hands twice on that play gets 10 depends on the spot as to whether it's enough for a first down and it is well they, they run the flea flicker and and Green Bay played it perfectly down the field they were not fooled but at the end of this you've got Ward coming back trying to put the big hit on A.J. Hawk. And he's the one who winds up taking out Mendenhall. I mean, that looked dangerous. One Ward coming in from behind. Of course, we already know that they've got the pen, or got the ruling in this year in order to keep a receiver from making a block backside without a receiver looking. But Ward was the one who came out of that one injured. Hand off to Mendenhall, trying to get to the edge. Penalty flag comes in. In the area of a hold, a loss of two on that run by Mendenhall. Holding. Number 83, offense, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. That's on Heath Miller. Two more games to go after this weekend. And it's first and 20 for Pittsburgh. off to Mendenhall two blockers in front of him Barnett makes the play and Mendenhall gets 10 but back to the original line of scrimmage in second and 10 you know in talking with Bruce Arians the other day and and how they're going to run the ball against this Green Bay team you know typically you start thinking about OK we'll you know line up in two back sets and and do some of those things but sometimes the easiest formations to run the ball out of is when you go to the spread formations and kind of clean everything up for those offensive linemen and just try to keep the defensive players from locking down in the box and getting so many bodies in there. Here's Mendenhall again to the 39 game four third down coming up. 
you know we talk about this Green Bay defense and, and the progress that they made this year and, and I know in talking with with Mike McCarthy he made it very clear when he was interviewing for a defensive coordinator that he felt that they had playmakers on the defensive side of the ball and he made it very clear to Dom Capers once he got the job that you know we expect this to be a top notch defensive football team and boy have they been that. Blitz coming from Green Bay and this is Mowelde Moore who cannot hang on. Incomplete. It's fourth down. Well, they had a chance there for an awfully big play. They bought they brought Tremont Williams the corner blitz and, and the Pittsburgh Steelers picked it up nicely. And if Mowelde Moore had been able to make that catch he was one on one there with safety Nick Barnett. There's Sepulveda his third punt of this first half and this is his best Jordy Nelson from the 16 somehow stays on his feet outruns a couple of tacklers and then gets hit out of bounds and a flag will be thrown Joe Burnett the rookie was along the sideline and hit Jordy Nelson when he was out of bounds. Uh, not very smart there by Joe Burnett. I mean clearly you've got Jordy Nelson who's on his way out Personal of bounds. Foul. Foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number 27 of the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First and 10 Green Bay. Well Kurt Warner and the Arizona Cardinals had a hiccup last week against the 49ers. Warner's better today and the Cardinals survived a scare. From Maurice Morris and the Detroit Lions today and Josh Cribbs two kickoff return touchdowns after a big game last Thursday against these Steelers. Ten and a half to play in the half and Rodgers throws and completes. That's good for 12 yards to Jermichael Finley the big tight end and we go back to the penalty on Burnett. Yeah you see Joe Burnett Jared Bush actually for the Packers does a good job on him Joe Burnett stays alive and he's got to run clear across the field in order to try to get a hit here on Jordy Nelson and by gosh if he's going to work that hard he's going to get a hit on him <laughs> and he did whether he was out of bounds or not you know a lot of these guys like Joe Burnett that are rookies that come into the league they're not used to playing special teams just a little bit. A little bit different for some of these college players coming in. Pass to driver, he dropped it. Looked like a good throw from Aaron Rodgers, who kind of turns his back in frustration, and Donald Driver had it in his hands and let it go. You don't see that very often from Donald Driver. He's got some of the surest hands in all of football. Those hands were broken in by the Brett Favre fastball. <laughs> Literally broken in. I think he told me one time he thinks he's broken every finger on his hands from old number four over the years. On second down it's Ryan Grant. Not much. And it's Hampton out there to make the play a gain of only one. Yeah, I mean you look at Green Bay and their lack of ability of running the football here in the early going of this ball game and. And yet they're sticking with it and, and rightfully so one because you can't just get into a game to where you're just dropping back and throwing it. That's awfully tough on these offensive linemen. But also if you look over the last three games of the teams that have faced the Pittsburgh Steelers they have run the ball actually very well much better than what their season averages would indicate. Third down and nine play clock was at one and the pass dropped again this time James Jones. Yeah, I think even if James Jones had been able to make that catch he was not going to be able to get enough for the first down he was short well short of where the drop took place but it didn't look like he was going to be able to get away from anybody in order to get the yards needed. Weldy Moore now waits. For the punt from Kapanos, and we'll see how good the rookie Kapanos is at downing it inside the 20. Hangs this one high. Moore lets it go, and this one is out of bounds in the end zone. 
Well that football didn't just go right over the pylon it actually touched it and by rule the pylon is considered out of bounds in the end zone and so it's a touchback good call down on the field and the Steelers started their 20 up seven. Handoff is to Mendenhall and Richard Mendenhall is out to the 30 yard line. And they're going to give Mendenhall a full 10 yards and a first down for the Steelers. The temperature has dropped three degrees since we started. Feels like 19. And the wind out of the west at nine miles per hour. We've seen a missed field goal by Mason Crosby. This is notoriously one of the toughest places to kick in the NFL, whether it's the footing or the wind. Missed a 34 yard try, and it's a seven point Steeler lead. They fake the handoff to Wallace, drop it off to Mendenhall, who picks up two. Atari Bigby on the stop for Green Bay. Second down and eight. Roethlisberger surveys the scene, and now a drop from Heinz Ward. Wide open over the middle, and Ward couldn't pull it in. And they go trips to that side. And you're going to see the release up the field. They execute it pretty well. They've got Heath Miller going up the field, but then Hines comes off of that, and they get Chiller and Woodson attracted to Heath Miller, which leaves Ward wide open then underneath, and he he just fails to make the play. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Hey, one of us going to be free. Interesting that the Packers have Raji now leaving the field so only one defensive lineman on the field for Green Bay defensively. Yeah, and that's 77 right there Colin Jenkins and he's the this is their their psycho package that they ran so effectively last week. Everybody moving around prior to the snap and Matthews gets there again. He was the first one there. Bishop got it home as well. And with all those linebackers flying around, the rookie got home. Well, look, everybody is to the right here. Nobody over on this side of the ball. These linemen right here have nobody to block. I mean, they got to somehow slide that down. They try to. And then in an attempt to do that, it's then trying to figure out who's coming and who's got who. And it's very, very hard on these offensive linemen. That is officially the first sack for Clay Matthews. The other one was negated by the challenge by the Steelers. And here's Jordy Nelson. Good return. You know, we saw that showed that psycho package that the Packers have defensively and, and that's part of the fun for these defensive players when you come in each Wednesday and you're told that you're going to run certain schemes and do some different things and that's something that Dom Capers has done a great job of this year. Down by seven Packers have it good starting field position and now Lee has one go off his chest and Rodgers has just got his hands on his hips turns his back to his receivers as if to say is anybody going to catch anything this is very hard you're going to see Donald Lee I mean he, he's got it and then James Ferrier 51 he has to carry that he never is able to get his head turned around and a perfect throw hits Donald Lee right in the gut and as a quarterback when that happens I mean it is hard it is very very hard to sometimes keep your emotions in check nice Look, job Roger I'd say it looked like it hit Ferrier glanced off his helmet and change direction just enough. Here's one for driver bad throw driver up to get it a good catch in a gain of eight. So let's go back to the throw two plays ago and watch it glance right there off the side of the helmet of Ferrier and that changed the direction. It doesn't limit the frustration for Aaron Rodgers. You can see him in the background but that one. I don't think is the fault of no Donald question. Lee. No question. I didn't catch that. And uh, yeah, hard catch when that <laughs> you know, when that happens. And Aaron Rodgers, I'm sure, is unaware of that unless Donald Lee came back pleading his case. Third down and two. Fake the inside handoff. Here's Jennings making a move and has a first down. 
He went right around William Gay. Taylor on the stop, a gain of eight, and a first down, Green Bay. You know, Donald Driver's the same way, and Greg Jennings, you know, when you get the ball into their hands, and so many times we see these types of things from the Green Bay Packers, the quick throws, and, and then you've got to come up and try to make a play, and it's not always easy to do. You know, William Gay, you don't want to overplay it, and he tries to, to then be in a position to make the tackle, and Greg Jennings just goes around him. Hard to believe the cornerbacks for the Steelers don't have an interception all season. The team has only eight. Here's Jennings. And a nice play on first down to the 30 yard line. Gay on the stop at a gain of seven, and that's just it's about as easy as it gets. Yeah, and this time instead of Greg Jennings trying to, you know, make him miss, he just gets the ball and runs right over William Gay and I know in visiting with Mike Tomlin the other day he said these receivers in his description of them they're combative and that was a compliment and they're a physical group they're physical as we just saw and they're also physical at the point of the catch. They're good after the catch with 101 yards after making the reception in this game. Rodgers with a good pocket hits Jones and James Jones makes a spin. And adds to that yardage after the catch. He's got a first down, a gain of 12, and the ball is spotted at the 18 yard line. And we're seeing the missed tackles in this ball game from Pittsburgh also. You know, William Gay has another opportunity. He fails to make it. And, you know, it's those types of things there that, that we're just not used to seeing from a Pittsburgh defense. You know, they've always been so fundamentally sound. They've never been outplayed physically. They certainly were 10 days ago against Cleveland, but. You know, some of the things that have made them such a great defensive unit for so many years are lacking from this 09 version. From the 18, Rodgers drops it off and it's almost intercepted. Off the hands of Woodley after Brandon Jackson couldn't haul in a screen pass. And Lamar Woodley, who is having a heck of a year. You know, with nine sacks, and he's got a chance here to make a big play to extend the lead. And I think that kind of falls into the category. There's Troy Polamalu, who they they certainly miss, and you know, not making any excuses for the defense. But you know, I I believe that if he were healthy, he would have changed the outcome in at least a couple of the games this year. These games have been that close the losses for Pittsburgh Rodgers is in trouble and drops it off for Jackson who makes a move and takes it down inside the 15 picked up five third down and five coming up for the Packers Kirschke on the stop for Pittsburgh. This is Travis Kirschke one of the defensive ends this team lost a good one in Aaron Smith defensive end played the first five games but. Suffered a partial tear in his right rotator cuff. Very good against the run. So they miss both Palomalu and Aaron Smith on this defense. Third down and five. Rodgers fakes a throw and takes it into the end zone. Touchdown. And the fourth rushing touchdown of the season for Aaron Rodgers. Well they go empty set you're going to see no back in the backfield so they got five receivers going out Pittsburgh comes with a four man rush they're locked up man underneath and Aaron Rodgers who is second on the team in rushing and you've got to be real careful down here when you're playing man coverage against a quarterback that can move the way that Aaron Rodgers can because that's what happens once he's able to get a lane he can gas you and the extra point just got through. Mason Crosby is really struggling. He almost yanked that. And Aaron Rodgers with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. No quarterback around the NFL has more rushing yards than Aaron Rodgers. And a little pump fake along the way. And then took it into the end zone untouched. Well, and, and you know, as we said, he's got great feet. He's able to run and he makes plays moving around the pocket. You like to have a quarterback that's like that. And, he, and as we know I mean he throws it as well as anybody but even when he breaks contain he is looking to get the ball down the field and make the throw but a nice job on his part recognizing the coverage recognizing it was man to man and then nobody is accounting for him.
you know, go back to the problems there with the kicking game. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever remembered a year where so many kickers are, are having problems and, and, and you know, kind of joked about it a little bit earlier, you know, changing holders. They did that in Dallas. Tony Romo now the holder there. I'm wondering what the, the Green Bay Packers will do, if anything. Maybe, maybe they'll change the deep snapper next week. I don't know. Well, there was <laughs> speculation that they might bring in some kickers during the week to audition. They didn't do it. That may change. Heading into next week as Stefan Logan has it on the return and Logan gets to the 20. That's it. <laughs> Roethlisberger has it batted back in his face. Johnny Jolly got his hand up and knocked it down. Well, if nothing else, this was a Steeler team that suffered eight sacks. The hands of the Cleveland Browns. A Thursday night game the Browns a 32nd ranked defense coming in. And so far just one sack allowed and it belongs to Clay Matthews as you look at the offensive leaders. For Pittsburgh. On second and ten. Screen for Moore. And Mowelde Moore is brought down just shy of the 25. Picked up four and a half Desmond Bishop who's getting more playing time now with these extra linebacker packages put to use by Dom Capers made the tackle. You know you talk about the sacks last week eight sacks that Ben Roethlisberger had against Cleveland and Bruce Arians in visiting with him I said you ever talk to Ben about the number of sacks and getting the ball out of his hands and he said he almost ruined a quarterback years ago when he was a coach at Mississippi State. Didn't say who that was, so he must not have gone on and done much. But uh, he said he doesn't, you know, because he's able to create so many plays when he gets outside the pocket. Here's that psycho package again by the Green Bay defense. The pass caught by Miller. And Heath Miller is forced out in midfield. They're going to mark him out at the Green Bay 48 with 2.01 left in the half. Well, A.J. Hawk, he's the one who's in coverage on Heath Miller, and that's a mismatch. I mean, Heath Miller is one of the better tight ends in the league. He runs awfully well. Pittsburgh has one timeout remaining. Tie game, two minutes left, and a first down at the Green Bay 48. Roethlisberger throws and completes to Holmes and Santonio Holmes stays on his feet to the 15. Roethlisberger who has a new career high for single season passing yardage completes for 33 to Santonio Holmes. Well Roethlisberger and this offensive line do a great job redirecting themselves to pick up the blitz off the front side that allowed him time then to get the ball to Holmes. First down Roethlisberger over the middle penalty flag is thrown. Brandon Schiller on the coverage of Heath Miller. Brandon Schiller was just rewarded with a contract extension during the course of the week. And there are two fouls on the play both by the defense both by number 54 illegal contact. Number 54 penalties declined. Pass interference. Number 54 penalties been accepted. First and goal. Now there's Brandon Chiller. He's the cover linebacker in their sub packages, and he's now trying to get matched up on Heath Miller. And you know, good call there by the officials. Definitely, contact was made. Heath Miller now with the new single season record for catches by a tight end in Steelers history. 64 Eric Green in 1993 had 63. It's first and goal. Roethlisberger in trouble. Down he goes and guess who. Clay Matthews. A loss of four and Matthews has his second of the day. 
Well, Clay Matthews is just so tenacious coming off the edge. And this, I mean, this is awfully hard then when you're talking about Max Starks trying to hold up one on one with a speed rusher like Clay Matthews, and he just simply hasn't been able to. Packers have three timeouts. They have not elected to use any on defense. It's second down and goal. Quick throw, more touchdown, Pittsburgh. Pretty good design right there. You're going to see Santonio Holmes come up here and make the block. And they come up and they get the ball to Mewelty Moore right away. And so he's in right behind it. In essence, it's like playing tailback and you got a lead blocker right out in front of you. Put it on him, stay in behind your blocker, Holmes, and take it in for a touchdown. Ben Roethlisberger, while he has set a career high for passing yardage in a season, has had a very good half. 14 of 20, 223 yards, two touchdowns now, no interceptions, and here's the big play on the drive. Well, you talk about the way that Ben Roethlisberger and the offensive line, they're able to redirect because the Packers are bringing blitz here. They shift everybody over to that way, and you're going to hear what Ben did to make it happen. Good. Justin Hartwig, the, the center, he will come up. He'll make a protection call. But because Roethlisberger is in the shotgun, he then can see where the pressure is coming and he can redirect the offensive line to make sure that that is blocked up. You heard him say righty, 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 which means everybody then is going to sift to the right, pick up the two extra blitzers coming to that side. And by doing that, you then got the protection to get the ball down the field for the big play to Holmes. 223 yards today, 3,569 for the season, already a new career high. And Reed pops it up with under 30 seconds to play in the half, and it goes right through the arms of Jackson. It's back on the football and takes it across the 25. They're going to say that Jackson is marked down back at the 23. So Jackson signaled for a fair catch and that's where they're going to mark him down at the 23. Coming up on the Visa halftime report, Kurt and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the league. The Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. And we heard Howie earlier today on the pregame show talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers and how they've gotten away from what they have been known for and running the football and how Mike Tomlin may step in next year and kind of get them back to that more of a physical run the football style and and I would agree with that. Rogers spins out of trouble and now on the run flips it for Nelson who has some room. That's a big first down play now with 24 seconds left and three timeouts the Green Bay Packers have thoughts of getting a score before the half. First ball. 24 yards as Rodgers just dumped yards. it over the defense into the arms of Jordy Nelson. The Jordy Nelson, who has been pretty banged up for most of the year, hasn't been able to con contribute as much as what he was able to a year ago. But you know, we've seen him on the return game already in this game, and but he's a he's a dynamic young player. And now the Steelers use their final timeout. The longest field goal ever made in the history of this stadium since 2001 is 51 yards. That would mean getting the ball to the Pittsburgh 33 yard line. Rodgers throws and just throws it away. Now 13 seconds remain. Jordy Nelson the closest one to it. You look at Clay Matthews. At the 47 yard line. Matthews has a couple of sacks in this game and his family has dealt with the Steelers over the years 
His dad Clay was a linebacker with the Cleveland Browns forever and his uncle Bruce a Hall of Fame offensive lineman with the Oilers and Titans. They set the standard pretty high in the Matthews family. 13 seconds left. Pass is complete to Nelson who will get out of bounds stop the clock seven seconds left and they're getting awfully close to field goal range the Packers have one crack at trying to make it more realistic and Nelson was good for 11 and then another missed tackle and although he really didn't get any more yardage out of it what he was able to do was stop the clock. And if Burnett was able to make that tackle, then Green Bay would have been forced to, to call the timeout. They've still got plenty left, but they've got a chance to get one more shot and they can work the entire field and try to come away with a field goal. Crosby's already missed one try this end of the field, and that to Greg Jennings may force Aaron Rodgers now to take one heave toward the end zone and hope for a defensive penalty or something. Miraculous to get points before the half. Oh boy, you got Aaron Rodgers now in this first half, who's who's thrown for over 230 yards in the game, and and yet it could have been so much better here in the first 30 minutes. I mean, so many opportunities that they have failed to connect on, whether it's drop passes or or just some errant throws where on his where, part. Where are you at? Only four seconds left. Into the end zone and through the back end of the end zone. That's how the half comes to a close. And a 21 14 lead by the Steelers, who will start this second half with the football. This one is squibbed off the hands of the backup tight end, Matt Spath. And he just falls on top of it near the 30 down to the field and Pam Oliver. Hey there Joe Mike McCarthy was not very pleased about the way that half ended. He said we had some lapses on defense that we are going to have to clean up. He also wasn't happy about those drops the from yard. the receivers. He said it's not a matter of cold. It's a matter of focus. It's Mike Tomlin means that time told me you know things weren't perfect in that first half but we really really fought and we need to do so for another 30 minutes. Back to you. All right Pam thank you and uh, as we hear that from Mike Tomlin. He really thought his team was outworked last week in Cleveland on a frigid night. Steelers have lost five straight. Packers have won five straight. Roethlisberger is brought down by the rookie Jones. Brad Jones had slipped, got up, and racks up his second sack of the season. Well, the Steelers opened up the second half the same way they opened up the first half with Ben Roethlisberger coming off play action here and then looking to try to get a shot down the field. But the receiver slipped over there on the sideline. You see Wallace here. He slips and Roethlisberger had nowhere then to go with the ball. Third Green Bay sack of the game a loss of five. The rookie Jones is playing in place of the injured Aaron Campman, who's on IR with a torn ACL. Roethlisberger scrambles and flips for Mendenhall, who makes a spinning catch, and that's what Ben Roethlisberger does. Kept the play alive and completes it for 25 yards. Yeah, it was a scramble drill, you know, by Mendenhall, and they're trying to get up and get the ball snapped. It's a matter of whether or not his feet got in. And it's close, but, but it looked like he did get him in but Mendenhall was in the flat and he just took it up the sideline and prior to the snap of the football a timeout is Time taken out. by Green Bay Green Bay prior to the snap so Mike McCarthy wants to challenge it after initially saying that Green Bay is charged with a timeout the officials gave the timeout back to Green Bay and it's now just a straight challenge by Mike McCarthy looks to us like Mendenhall got his feet inbounds with control of the football it was ruled a 25 yard completion on second and 15 it's either a first and 10 at midfield and Green Bay loses a timeout 
or third and 15 at the 25 for the Steelers and we think the play will stand but the booth is 0 for 1 so far in this game as we try and figure out what John Perry is going to do after looking at it under the hood. But it was a good job by Mendenhall on the play because once he recognized that Roethlisberger had gotten outside the pocket he then turned up the sideline and gave Roethlisberger a place to go with the ball. And I agree with you I I think he got two feet in in fact I think he got three feet in before he went out of bounds. Well as we say that the teams move back down toward the Pittsburgh 20 now they're being called back toward midfield. Be interested to see if John Perry disagrees with us again. After reviewing the play the play stands as called completed catch. Green Bay is charged with the first team timeout. So if nothing else Green Bay catches a minor break and that they put the timeout back on the board and just ruled it a straight challenge a Green Bay could have lost two timeouts by calling the timeout then losing one because of a missed challenge. Yeah, Mike McCarthy he's had a few breaks with the challenges this year. Remember back a few weeks ago when they played Dallas they were out of challenges and he threw the red flag anyway and yet did not get penalized in that game. Roethlisberger now has five completions of 20 or more yards in this game. He throws to Logan and Stefan Logan is to the Green Bay 46. Woodson on the stop. And a gain of five. And a player is down. That's middle linebacker Nick Barnett, who is 13 months off tearing his ACL on his right knee, and he's been experiencing some swelling. Green Bay lost him last year, and they can't afford to lose the middle. Ooh, the left knee just gave out. Footing is not good on this field, as we've seen. A couple of times in this game with players slipping and sliding as they try to make a cut. No it, it, this time of year this field has not been good. It's probably in about as good a shape right now as we've seen in, in previous years. It's not as wet as what it typically is this time of year. I was down on the field before the ball game and it was it was pretty dry. Not a lot of grass on the field but you know yeah that, that knee kind of gave out on him there and. You know sometimes we talk about it you see a guy walking off the field as we see Nick Barnett and and you tend to think then that everything is fine and you know when I know when I was playing we'd have teammates that would leave you think they'd be OK and walk off on their own powers next thing you know they're having reconstructive surgery the next week. Well it was interesting it was the left knee that gave out but it was the right knee that they were looking at that's the surgically repaired knee for Barnett. Here's Mendenhall on second down and Mendenhall loses two. Johnny Jolly in the middle of that defensively A.J. Hawk was in there as well and that'll bring up third down for Pittsburgh. Yeah I just never had a chance Heath Miller was trying to be the lead blocker on that play and Green Bay did a good job of getting a push and running Heath Miller right back in Mendehall had nowhere to go. A.J. Hawk had to change helmets now he has the communication helmet on with Nick Barnett out of the game. It's third down and seven. Roethlisberger throws down the middle pass complete and now dropped Wallace had it and lost it Bigby delivered a hit and as Wallace went to the ground he lost the football. Yeah, we see Green Bay they had a two deep safety look and that's where you want to then go with the football Wallace runs a good route Roethlisberger puts it right on him he has it but then you know Bigby comes in late doesn't put a real big hit on him Wallace just is unable to con control the ball as he goes down. So it's ruled an incomplete pass and a punt from Sepulveda with Jordy Nelson a fair catch at the 15. Discussion by Santonio Holmes and the rookie Mike Wallace on the sideline after that possession Wallace was open lost the ball going to the ground incomplete on third down. And so here's Aaron Rodgers Green Bay threw the ball 83 percent of the time in the first half they start with a run and it's Ryan Grant over the right side he got five Tyrone Carter on the stop for the Steelers and the play selection Green Bay has wanted to throw the ball since they got off the team bus twenty nine times 
compared to seven times rushing and that includes Aaron Rodgers touchdown run of 14 yards. Yeah no they have not run the ball and, and the few times right they have they haven't run it particularly well right but you know they've done a good job in pass protection you know considering that and then of course they've been able to get the big plays in the passing game. Another handoff to Grant play is strung out to the right and Grant gets back to the line of scrimmage it'll be third and five. One impressive part of this is with even all the issues that Green Bay has had protecting Aaron Rodgers the number of times he's dropped back he has not been sacked. And with the pressure that Pittsburgh can generate and now it's third down and five and you expect another Aaron Rodgers pass. Yeah, and on that last play they brought in uh, reserve backup lineman T.J. Lang try to give him a little extra blocking and they still weren't able to get much out of it. On third down Rodgers throws low and incomplete. And Jennings grabs at his left ankle. It'll be fourth down and Jennings needs help from driver to get up. Well that field is sloppy at best. When we talked about the health of the Packers coming into this game they've got a few guys that are banged up along that defensive front but they got their line healthy and you know overall for this time of year they're they're in pretty good shape but you know Nick Barnett went down and then Jennings there. Kapanos just got it away. Stefan Logan hauls it in inside the 40 and a penalty flag comes flying in and Logan gets nothing on the return. You saw Chad Clifton come out banged up after that last third down play and Andre Frazier almost blocked that punt as Kapanos just did get it away and the indication is the penalty is against Pittsburgh. Here is John Perry during the return during illegal the block return, in the back number twenty nine of the return team ten yard penalty first and ten Pittsburgh that's Ryan Mundy. Jack Clifton had to have his neck stretched out after that last series. He ended up banging into the body of Scott Wells. Now Pittsburgh has it starting at their own 26. Roethlisberger with a pocket skips it into Santonio San Holmes. No flag. Woodson on the coverage and Troy Charles Woodson has got to be in the conversation for defensive player of the year in the NFL. I mean he has done everything. And for a guy that the Raiders thought couldn't run years ago, he may be having his best season as he plays in his 12th out of Michigan. Oh, I think that he is. And if I had a vote, he'd get mine. I know Darrell Revis has been a heck of a player this year there for the New York Jets. But I, I think when you look at the overall impact that Charles Woodson has had, I just can't imagine anyone else having done more for their unit. Jared Allen has had a good year in Minnesota for sure. But when you consider as Mendenhall carries it for two that Woodson Third down and seven. has nine takeaways which ties for the NFL lead. He's played some safety he plays the nickel back he's on slot receivers he's out wide he's covering receivers all the way down the field and he is creating turnover something the Steelers wish they had defensively. And he is their certainly defensive MVP on this Green Bay team. Well, in addition to the interceptions, he's fifth in the National Football League in forced fumbles. Here's that psycho package on third down and eight. Out of the backfield, it's Mendenhall. Plenty of room to run. And Richard Mendenhall is knocked out of bounds at the 47 of Green Bay. Nick Collins drove him out after a gain of 25. Well the Green Bay Packers they go to their psycho defense again you got Colin Jenkins who is the lone defensive lineman he's standing up everyone else is linebackers the Pittsburgh Steelers overall do a pretty good job they turn one loose but Mendenhall who they're anticipating will stay in and block he comes out of the backfield and nobody then in coverage on him. Here's Willie Parker. His first carry of the day gets nine. And second down and one. Handoff is to Parker. Almost broke it. Willie Parker gets nine, and he almost had 
his first rushing touchdown of the season. He was one tackle away. Well, that's a job that Matt Spath does here, the tight end. He's the one who really allows them to get the hole. You've got Heinz Ward leading the way, but because of the block there, he creates the alley, the block on Brad Jones, the outside linebacker. And those are the types of blocks you have to have if you're going to run the ball to the tight end side. Bigby saved a touchdown with that leg tackle of Willie Parker. Why not stay with it? It doesn't work this time. As Clay Matthews makes the play a loss of one. Down by Packers defense compared to the season Eight, average in points allowed and total yards allowed. Two, well, we're two. only midway through the third quarter. Already 21 points against him and 317 total yards allowed. They're in this five game win streak. A lot, only 14 points per game. Yeah, and, and only the second time in the last 10 games that the Packers have given up over 300 yards of total offense. Second down and 12. Roethlisberger over the middle completes for a first down to Heinz Ward. Well they bring Tremont Williams off the corner and they play cover two in behind it and you're going to have Charles Woodson who's back there playing safety and he's going to be the one who's going to try to make a play if in fact Ward had been able to catch that on the move. First down, Roethlisberger, middle screen. That's Mendenhall. His second touchdown, but a flag comes in. Pass interference, number 83 offense, 10 yard penalty, replay. First down. Pass interference on Heath Miller on a screen. To Richard Mendenhall. Yeah, that flag came in late also. And take a look. I, I didn't see it. You know, right there, he's down the field. Now you can block. They're, they must have been saying that Heath Miller initiated the contact on that block prior to Mendenhall getting the ball into his hands. You're able to do that, but you have to do that within a yard of the line of scrimmage. And clearly he was down the field before Mendenhall was able to make that catch. That was a good call. So instead of a touchdown to Mendenhall, it's first and 20 with the ball back at the 24. Hand off to Mendenhall and the rookie Jones, who's really played well. A seventh round pick out of Colorado. He played outside linebacker for the Buffaloes, and he took over after Campman, the two time Pro Bowler, went down against San Francisco midway through the season. and. Tell you, for a seventh round pick and out of a rookie, the Green Bay Packers have gotten a lot out of Brad Jones. Well, they like his pass rushing ability, and, and I think it was a hard adjustment for Aaron Campman going from outside defensive end to outside linebacker. I think Brad Jones gives them a little more athleticism now that he's on the field. Second down and 18. Roethlisberger gets away from Cullen Jenkins and now takes a sack. There's the good of Ben Roethlisberger and then there's the bad and that was the bad as he hung on forever and that fires up Kevin Green a longtime Steeler a sack for Brad Jones and it doesn't take much to fire up Kevin Green I'll promise you and you know right about here is where Roethlisberger's got to understand I got to get it out of my hand and you know Bruce Arians the other day was talking about the offensive line and the criticism that they've taken with all the sacks that have been given up and Coming into this game, he felt that the offensive line was only responsible for about half of them. And you can only hold up for so long before the quarterback has to unload it. Just get it away before the play clock expires. Mowelde Moore on a screen takes it to the 20 and just inside to the 19 yard line. And all they did was make it easier for the place kicker Jeff Reed on third and forever. Yeah, that was a good call because the sack, you know, then that was going to be an awfully tough field goal attempt from that range, about 46, 47 yards from where they were. So they come to Mewelde Moore with a screen and, 
and make this a much more manageable field goal attempt. Roethlisberger now over 300 yards in this game and a 37 yard try for Jeff Reed. This is the tougher end for field goals, the opened end here at Heinz Field. And the kick stays true. If you're one of the up backs, you better be ready because Jeff Reed likes to pop up these kicks. This one's got a little more behind it and carries all the way to Nelson from just inside the 10. See if he gets any blocking. Jordy Nelson is out to the 32. Earlier in this game, Mason Crosby missed from 34. Watch his left foot slide just a little prior to the kick as we look at Fox Exmo and maybe just a little less give with Jeff Reed hitting moments ago from 37. Same end of the field the open end and that drive by Reed makes it a 10 point game. Packers start at their 31. Rodgers and now Finley slips makes the catch as he's seated and then gets turned over by Lawrence Timmons. I don't know how you get up from something like that. That was a lot of work for a one yard game. I mean look at that. I mean he Aaron Rodgers had good protection Chad Clifton against James Harrison does a good job because Aaron Rodgers was holding that ball in the pocket for a little while and that's that's not easy to do James Harrison as we know even though he doesn't have the numbers he's still one of the elite pass rushers in the National Football League. Finley's hurt after that tackle. With Timmons landing on top of Finley's legs and now about three Steelers land on top of Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Woodley who's been hot. Seven sacks in his last five games coming in but he wasn't alone. Well Harrison drops and then they're coming from this side. And so. They they overload the one side which is what Dick LeBeau is so well known for and they're able to get the pressure on Aaron Rodgers that they had not really been able to do since that first quarter. That's the first sack of the day for the Steelers 32 dropbacks by Aaron Rodgers who sacked for the 49th time this season most in the NFL third and 16. Rodgers over the middle completes for a first down to Donald Driver. Third and 16 and Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay converted to a first down. That's an area of the field that the Green Bay Packers have had some success with particularly with Donald Driver. You know another dig route and playing zone and there's a nice area there then behind those linebackers and you know Aaron Rodgers even though he only has been sacked the the one time he has taken a few hits in this ball game. 76 yard day for driver Finley is back in the lineup for Green Bay and there he is. Why did he have to check out for a play. He was shaken up on the tackle by Lawrence Timmons when he was seated legs in the air and then Timmons just flips him over. It was a one yard catch. Jermichael Finley is emerging in his second year as one of the real big threats at the tight end position. He can run. He's a big body. He is a mismatch. Too big for cornerbacks, too fast for linebackers. Second and five. And they turned him loose right here. Pass is behind the intended receiver. Catch made by Quinn Johnson. And now they say incomplete. Well initially it looked like they were going to have a an, an uncovered receiver and driver because they went with Ryan Grant out wide and then you've got Ike Taylor who's who's a little bit confused and trying to get a defender out there and at the last minute James Harrison recognized that he came out then to try to give some help Aaron Rodgers looked at it initially didn't feel that they had anything and then went the other way it's third down and five. Rodgers steps up and completes to Jennings. 
Jennings survived a hit from Ryan Clark hung on and gets a Green Bay first down. Aaron Rodgers does such a nice job and they coach this Mike McCarthy and Joe Philbin the offensive coordinator you're going to see Aaron Rodgers he drops back he gets pressure off the edge and then as long as you've got a pocket to step up in step up and then slide and that's what he does and puts a good ball then on Greg Jennings. Oh Chad Clifton he's had his hands full whether it be James Harrison this time he's got James Ferrier. And he's clutching that right arm but. Tough duty on those left tackles on first down pass to Finley. And Finley is wrestled to the ground by the rookie Joe Burnett. It's a first down for Green Bay. And that time they split Finley out wide to the right. Well, you talked about him and all the different things that they can do with Jermichael Finley. And, you know, he has created some real problems for defensive units. He's doing all the things right now that they anticipated he would be doing a year ago when they drafted him out of the University of Texas. We talked about Richard Mendenhall and, and his maturation. In his second year, well, the same things have happened for Jermichael Finley and the Green Bay Packers. Now Ryan Grant is split out wide to the bottom of your screen. And Rodgers hangs in, nearly picked off by James Harrison. Intended for Jennings in second and ten, and Rodgers was tough on that throw because he was going to get hit. Yeah, he felt that one. He felt it on his front side from from Lawrence Timmons and actually a pretty good throw but that's a, that a heck of a play there by James Harrison being able to lay out and get his hands on that ball second down and ten and now Pittsburgh spends their first time out second down and ten for the Packers with the ball at the twenty seven down by ten. Rodgers has good protection in front of him but nowhere to go. So instead he takes off the top running quarterback in the NFL picks up five. Hey, you go back and take a look at that slant route that we saw earlier the play that Harrison made and Harrison might have got his hand there on on Greg Jennings and Greg Jennings was looking for the pass interference call pleading his case here. You know, with the officials as, as well as with James Harrison. 27 degree night. Chile on December 20th. Third down and five for Green Bay. Well inside field goal range for Mason Crosby who has missed one in this game. He is 0 for 1. And struggling now working with a new holder. Packers have loftier ambitions of trying to convert. And get a touchdown as they trail by 10. Might get a cheap one. Yeah, it looked like Lamar Woodley might have got into the neutral zone. Neutral zone infraction. Number 94 defense in the zone. Causing the reaction on the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Yeah, it was either Woodley or Timmons. Either one could have gotten the call. It's a five yard penalty, and we'll see where that moves the football. It's right at the marker. Yeah, the Green Bay Packers now are asking for a measurement. That's a that's a big five yard penalty. I mean, a lot of things now at their disposal, even if this is not a first down. A good job there by Aaron Rodgers coming up and trying to use hard count and you really have to then trust that those offensive linemen are going to hang in there if you do that. I mean going from third and five to potentially third and ten if you draw your own guys off sides. But he was able to get the defense. See how good our line is. Pretty good. Good enough. It's short. This will be the tenth play of the drive. Aaron Rodgers has already converted on a third and 16 and a third and five. This will be third and inches. Yeah, I mean, the Green Bay has been awfully good on third down. I mean, they've been good all season long, but they have been good again in this ball game, and that's that's an area defensively for Pittsburgh. And we talked about some of the big plays that they have given up, and they've given up more big plays in this one. 
But this year they have not been good on third down. Rodgers will keep it and make it. Shoved forward by the up back Quinn Johnson. Mon Green was in a tailback on that play and it's a first down for Green Bay. It's a nice surge there by this offensive line. Aaron Rodgers made that easily. Of course he got a little help there from Quinn Johnson. His fullback <laughs> getting in behind him and making sure the pile went forward. Now 22 rushing first downs this season for Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers throws and completes. That's Donald Lee. Five yard gain. You know it's interesting we've seen the Green Bay Packers go to a lot of empty set formations with Aaron Rodgers in the gun and in. Every time they've done it I've only seen Pittsburgh bring four rushers and I think that's why they continue to do it because we've seen what's happened when the Green Bay Packers have gotten their people down inside and they're bringing those linebacker blitzes but they go to the empty set spread them out and the, and the Steelers have, have not blitzed out of that formation. Second down and five Rodgers over the middle pass is broken up and a good play. On Donald Driver by Deshea Townsend. Third down and five. Yeah, that was a good play. Again, they go empty set, a four man rush, and just good position there by Deshea Townsend. I mean, there was really nowhere that Aaron Rodgers could, could put that ball to give Donald Driver a chance to make the play. So another third down. Rodgers floats it. Penalty flag as the catch is made by Finley. But a flag is down in the middle of the field. Packers say it's against Pittsburgh. Is it a Press touchdown for Finley? Prone. Holding number 23 defense. That penalty will be declined. Result of the play. Touchdown. I mean that touchdown right there just shows you how athletic and how good Jermichael Finley is. We got Ryan Clark who's 5'11 and Jermichael Finley who's 6'5 and so yeah Aaron Rodgers he wants to get this ball up as best he can and right there it's just playing basketball post him up and let the bigger guy go up and make a play and that's what he was able to do. Combination is really becoming something for Green Bay. Jermichael Finley been thrown to seven times in this game. He has six catches, 28 catches over his last five games. Now four touchdown receptions, and the Packers were four for four on third down, including the touchdown throw to Finley during that drive. Well, this game has turned out to, a, to be a real shootout between these two quarterbacks. Two top five defenses coming in. Stephon Logan on the return. Logan breaks loose. Crosses the 30 and he's out to the 37. You can see how the fourth quarter has been a problem for the Steelers. The points allowed 29th in the NFL during the final quarter. It's now a three point game as Roethlisberger steps up and hits Heinz Ward. To the Green Bay 35 they'll mark him down at the 34 a 29 yard completion from Ben Roethlisberger. They do a good job off play action a lot of times the play action protections are, are the most solid protection that you can get and he gets good time. But this is a perfectly thrown ball by Ben Roethlisberger Atari Bigby is in pretty good position he bites just enough flattens out and Roethlisberger lays it perfectly over his head right into Heinz Ward. For Ben it's his fifth 300 yard passing game this season. That's a new Steeler record. The ball's handed off to Willie Parker. Good for two and back to the completion to Heinz Ward. 
I mean, from considering how far Roethlisberger has to throw this ball, I mean, he sees that Bigby is in a position to be able to make a play, and he knows he's got he cannot underthrow that that ball. He's got to get it out there, and he does. And a good job there by Heinz Ward of being able to bring it in. I thought it was interesting talking to Heinz Ward. You know, here he is in his 12th year, and asked him how much longer he's going to play. He said, "Well, it's not like I'm going to lose a step. I never had one to lose." Here's Parker again on second down, picks up one. Heinz Ward, who's been playing with a strained hamstring, is over 1,000 yards for the season. So that means that both he and Santonio Holmes, his teammates, are over 1,000 yards. Pretty good. You know, he said that growing up, that Michael Irvin was was his favorite receiver, and he's always kind of compared his career to the numbers of Michael Irvin, and and he's there, and you know, he felt pretty good about that, knowing what Michael was able to go on and accomplish. The Hall of Famer Michael Irvin and now that psycho package Roethlisberger completes first down Heath Miller. Twelve yard completion to the Pittsburgh tight end. You know they've had A.J. Hawk locked up on Heath Miller a few times. And that's just hard duty. It's hard on no matter. It's hard on anyone who's trying to cover Heath Miller. We haven't had too many seen too many guys have much success in doing that. But Heath Miller is able to turn around a big body and then Roethlisberger puts it right on him. First down of the Green Bay 18. Parker carries. Leading now by three. Second and seven. Make it second and eight. Out of the shotgun pump fake from Roethlisberger and the pass incomplete out of the back of the end zone in the direction of Heinz Ward who gets up Gimpy. Third down and eight. Yeah, I think you got to be pretty impressed with what we've seen from both of these offenses and the job that they've done moving the football putting points on the board and then also the big plays. You know Bruce Arians in talking with him and. You know, and you mentioned it, Joe. The, the, he feels that they've had a balanced attack, and and I would agree with that when you look at the numbers and what the receivers and Mendenhall, and then of course Ben Roethlisberger. He'll likely go for over 4,000 yards before this season is over. Big third down here for the Steelers as Roethlisberger throws it out of the back of the end zone, and so Green Bay's defense holds. And a field goal attempt coming up from Reed, and the best he can do is make it a six point game. Well, they had a shot there to, to Hines Ward. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I, you know, Hines looked like he was expecting a better opportunity to make a play, and Roethlisberger either didn't realize that he was going to come open on that like he did, or the ball just got away from him. Looked like Hines Ward kind of turned it on about halfway through that route. Roethlisberger had already let it go. 34 yard try by Reed. Good snap, good hold. Reed gets it. He's two for two. That last field goal attempt by Jeff Reed glanced off the inside of the right upright. And with that, it's a six point game here in Pittsburgh. Green Bay down and about to get the ball back. Big day for Ben Roethlisberger. Some big plays from Aaron Rodgers. And a short kick taken by Bishop, the backup linebacker, and Green Bay will start at their own 38. Good starting field position for the Packers down by six. And we welcome you inside the booth. I'm Joe. That's Troy. And uh, another look at this Green Bay offense, which has been so good during this five game winning streak and now trying to move the ball again on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, well, I think both offenses have been outstanding. I think both quarterbacks are, are playing great. Aaron Rodgers doing a nice job. Numbers could be better than what they are if he had been able to get some of those balls caught. But Ben Roethlisberger is having himself an outstanding game here tonight. 346 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. 
Rodgers has been sacked only once throws behind Jermichael Finley who makes the catch his seventh of the game and a gain of five. I tell you that didn't look like much you know a gain of five yards but that was a pretty athletic catch there by Jermichael Finley. We've been talking about him and all the things that he's able to do his versatility but a ball that was thrown behind him and he makes a nice move in, o in order to get behind that and make a play. Yardage wise Jennings has the most catches wise Finley leads this team with seven. Timeout Green Bay their second Super Bowl champs the defending Super Bowl champs trying to avoid their sixth consecutive loss Finley circled at the bottom of your screen second down that's Finley and Finley stretches for a first down first and ten. We welcome in a new audience in a matchup of the number four overall defense against the number two overall defense. Steelers have lost five in a row. Packers have won five in a row. It's been a shootout. Both quarterbacks over 300 yards passing. Green Bay down by six. On first down. Rodgers throws Jordy Nelson nice adjustment and a good throw from Aaron Rodgers in front of William Gay 27 yards and a Green Bay first down. We've seen the Packers operate almost exclusively here out of the empty set with Aaron Rodgers in the shotgun. Now they got William Gay here a ball that was well thrown and put it in the only place that he could really put it where Jordy Nelson had an opportunity because Gay was actually in pretty good position defensively but nice execution there on the previous play the Steelers finally blitzed that formation and that's when they got the slant completion there to Jermichael Finley delayed handoff that's Ryan Grant Ryan Grant will scoot in for the touchdown And this Steelers defense and this Steelers team has been victimized again in the final quarter. Well this time they go with a two back set. You see Ryan Grant in the I formation Corey Hall leading the way as the fullback good blocking down the field by Jordy Nelson. One of the first times Ryan Grant has seen any daylight. I'll say. That gives Green Bay the lead. It's 28 27. Our Fox box is going crazy. Ryan Grant, before that, six carries for 17 yards. And that one good for 24. And after the extra point, a Packer lead. Well, what a great job there by. The Green Bay Packers defensively they're able to hold the Steelers to a field goal on their first possession or on their last possession and they come right back down the field and answer with a touchdown of their own. And head coach Mike McCarthy who is from Pittsburgh grew up in the Greenfield area is pumped up. 30 passes left for family and friends. He had a family dinner last night, about five minutes from downtown Pittsburgh. And here he is bringing his red hot Green Bay Packers into Pittsburgh. And the Packers have their first lead, one point with 7.49 left in the game as the shootout continues. No defending Super Bowl champion has ever lost six straight. The following season and that's what's on the line here for the Steelers along with a lot of pride as they have currently lost five in a row. Here's Stephon Logan. Twelve plays of 20 or more yards in this game total. 28 27 Packers Mendenhall tries the right side breaks through penalty flag on the play. Penalty flag is thrown. In the area of a hold. Holding. Number 10 offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay. 
first down. It's wide receiver Santonio Holmes. Yeah, we've seen Santonio Holmes get involved a lot on the perimeter blocking. He's done a good job for most of the evening, but he did have a hold of the jersey there of Tremont Williams. You know, one thing over the years, of course, Heinz Ward sets the standard, but these wide receivers for the Pittsburgh Steelers for many years have done a heck of a job. That time, Santonio Holmes got a little too aggressive. Makes it first and 20. Roethlisberger comes underneath the Mendenhall and he's got basically nowhere to go. Steelers down one. Roethlisberger nowhere to throw it. Breaks loose and now airs it out for Heinz Ward. Downfield, what a catch! Jared Bush is victimized again. 53 yards for Roethlisberger and Heinz Ward. And this is why Bruce Arians doesn't talk to Roethlisberger about the sacks that he takes because he's able to keep this play alive where a lot of guys would have already unloaded it. You see the maneuverability that he shows and he had Heinz Ward in behind Jared Bush and he sees him late gets as much on it as what he can. Jared Bush I'll tell you he made up ground because Roethlisberger could not get it out far enough. He just never turned to make a play on the ball. Play clock winding down play action from Roethlisberger <laughs> over the middle Heath Miller had a hand on him by A.J. Hawk but no flag. And Roethlisberger can't believe it. And A.J. Hawk has seen enough of Heath Miller in this game. <laughs> yeah I think so. I, I think this Green Bay defense has seen enough of Heath Miller in this game. And I think it was a good non call. I mean you saw that A.J. Hawk reached out and I couldn't tell if he got a hold of him or not. It didn't look to me like he actually got a got a grab on him but the way Heath Miller reacted you sure thought that he might have. Now over 400 yards on the deck against the number two ranked defense is Roethlisberger. Good play by Charles Woodson. Knocked it away from Heinz Ward. Now it's third down with under five and a half minutes to play. This is a Pittsburgh team that is trying to fight back. Now behind on the scoreboard for the first time in this game. Another new audience joins us. Third down and 10 for the Steelers, down by one. 524 left. Roethlisberger over 400 yards passing in this game. Penalty flag is thrown on the play as Roethlisberger fights for first down yardage, but a flag is down. And it's coming back. Holding. Number 79. Offense. 10 yard penalty replay. Third down. I, I think it was more. Are you going to see Colin Jenkins goes right through Trey Essex. And the only thing that he can <laughs> the only thing he can do is try to grab him. He was on his way on his back. I'll tell you what that's a big penalty because it moves the ball back to the thirty three. A game that has featured one big play after another. Roethlisberger trying to find somewhere to go with it. Now throws and he hits Mendenhall is to the 25. An eight yard gain. And now you're talking about a 43 yard try from Jeff Reed who just squeaked one in his last time from 34 yards out. He's two for two in this game and he'll try to put Pittsburgh back on top. Sepulveda the holder clears out the area where he will place it. Nothing is a given in this stadium. Tough place to kick. And the field goal is good. Steelers back on top by two. 
The difference in this game is a 34 yard miss on the other end in the first half by the Packers kicker Mason Crosby and there's the execution by the field goal unit for Pittsburgh. I just don't know if you can say enough about the job that Ben Roethlisberger has done in this game Aaron Rodgers as well but you know Ben Roethlisberger going in against this defense of the Packers the third ranked defense given up an average of under 190 yards a game and yet here he is over 400 yards passing here today. How about an onside field and it is to perfection recovered by Pittsburgh and Ike Taylor now a penalty flag is thrown did it go 10 yards it's got to get to the 40 before it's touched by Ike Taylor and a late flag is thrown and there's the sign for illegal touch and you talk about a gamble when you lead by two to try an onside kick. I don't get it. But they almost got it and now we'll check the call. A late flag was thrown Illegal when the Packers sideline went after the official. Prior to it yards Pittsburgh by rule Green Bay ball at the spot of the touch first and ten. And I don't understand this one at all. Let's first see if it went ten yards. Nope. And it did not. Mike Taylor there is. He was in a good position and, and could, if he had gotten 10 yards then he recovers it without any problems but you know he just didn't want to wait until it got to that point the Packers knew right away but you know to go back to the decision I, I don't get it on a number of levels it would have made more sense if the Packers needed a touchdown to regain the lead They're only two points down trying to set something up for Finley incomplete second and ten from the thirty nine. Pass complete to Jordy Nelson. Takes it just outside the 30. Crosby, who has missed from 34 in this game, has now missed in four straight games from inside 45 yards, and he's missed to this end of the field. As right now, the Packers are inside field goal range at the moment. Green Bay left with only one timeout. Yeah, I'm still trying I'm still trying to go back to Mike Tomlin's thinking on the onside kick. You know, I say it would have made more sense. I don't think it made any sense regardless of what the score was with a lead. But if it meant that the Packers had to go down and get a touchdown then at least you're saying our defense can hold up and keep them from getting in the end zone. But well you're giving them a lot of a lot of advantages when you give them a short field and all they need to do is get the field goal to regain the lead. Right now you're talking about a 49 yard try and you talk about you know when you start working with mechanics and fundamentals you're working on those things during the course of the week and then you're just hoping that when you get into the game that you can continue to execute the way that you did in practice and boy, when you're struggling it is hard it is hard to block out the negatives. All that's a long way of saying this is a big third and one for Green Bay. Pass is complete. Jermichael Finley's had another big game. Down to the 20 yard line, a completion of 10 yards. And now Green Bay can start to work some of the clock. And that's what they're going to want to do. And Jermichael Finley actually does a good job after he catches that ball. He immediately secures it. He was expecting a collision right away. He might have been able to get a little more yardage had he been anticipating that he was going to have some space to run. But he protected the football knowing he had the first down and did not want to risk putting it on the ground. Nine catches for Finley 74 yards. Green Bay's five of six on third down this half. Ryan Grant what a good play by Casey Hampton. Good play by Casey Hampton Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if he got stepped on or just got tripped up but that was almost a disaster there in the backfield. Now timeouts taken by Pittsburgh. You see how Aaron Rodgers came out awkwardly and but yet was fortunately for the Packers able to still make the exchange. We'll walk out of here having to explain that onside kick try after his club had just taken a two point lead. 
Second and 14. Blitz. Packers pick it up. James Jones incomplete. So much to talk about with two games remaining on the schedule after this weekend for the regular season. Third and 14. And I think Green Bay has to forget about the first down and try and get a little more yardage to make it easier on Crosby. Be a 43 yard try from here. Another blitz. Pass is caught. Jones touchdown. James Jones with his fifth touchdown catch of the season. Well, the rookie Joe Burnett fell down in coverage, which is why Jones was as open as he was. Here he is, Joe Burnett. And you see the move to the post there, and Burnett jumps on it. And then as he tries to come back out of it, he was already beat, but he slipped. And even if he had not been able to keep his footing, good route there by James Jones. Selling the post, coming back to the corner. And Aaron Rodgers with great protection. They brought your Michael Finley in to help solidify that in the middle. Pittsburgh brought the blitz. And that, that group up front did a good job giving Rodgers time to make the throw. The offense stays out on the field. To go for two. They can still only make it a six point game. Well, why not? Packers this season two for four on two point tries. They've gone to Jennings twice. This one is complete to Jackson. And it's a 36 30 score. And now, if the Steelers get into the end zone, everything would be riding on an extra point. <laughs> and the celebration by the Green Bay Packers, who are now two minutes and six seconds away from their sixth consecutive victory and a tough road win in Mike McCarthy's hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now you go back to the touchdown and a good call by Mike McCarthy and a great route on the outside by James Jones. I mean, you sell it to the post, come back, and running that route on the rookie with no contest. Well, Weldy Moore lets it get behind him. Here is Stefan Logan on the return. And Logan can't get to the 15. He's to the 13 yard line with 201 remaining in the game. Here is that onside kick attempt. And because it was touched by Ike Taylor right there at the 39 yard line, it didn't travel the necessary 10 yards. It's an illegal touch. And Green Bay took over at the 39 and took it down into the end zone. And the one thing about it is if if they had executed it properly if Ike Taylor doesn't reach out and grab it with his hand at, at nine yards and waits till he's at 10 yards you know they get the ball but I just I, it makes no sense to kind of take that that risk. Roethlisberger completes penalty flag on the play as we're at the two minute warning. A minute 54 remaining. Pittsburgh is down by six, trying to avoid their sixth consecutive loss. A minute 54 remaining. A new audience joins us here in Pittsburgh. Steelers down by six. Roethlisberger steps up and cannot avoid the sack. That's Papinga, who gets his hands on the feet of Ben Roethlisberger. And brings him down. Clock continues to wind. Steelers have to wait for Heinz Ward to get all the way back down the field. Under a minute and a half to go. Second down. Pass is to Heath Miller, who hops out of bounds. A gain of seven. Jared Bush on the stop. This is a game. That has featured one big play after another. Both quarterbacks over 300 yards. Roethlisberger's over 400 yards, and the last score to James Jones after the Steelers had kicked a field goal to take a two point lead. They tried an onside kick 
An illegal touch. Packers took over at the Steeler 39 and got it into the end zone. Two point conversion and a six point lead. Third down and seven. A little pump by Roethlisberger. Hangs on and he's nearly picked off. Stepping in front was Tremont Williams, and it's now fourth and seven. And what we're seeing from the Packers right now, you got Johnny Jolly, he's standing up, and no one's really trying to come after Ben Roethlisberger. They're giving him time in the pocket. They've got eight defenders dropping into coverage, and the only thing they don't want is him breaking contain and then putting pressure out on the edges, because if he becomes a threat to run the ball, then you've got defenders coming off of receivers. They're just trying to keep him in the in the pocket and make him throw and the Packers are doing a good job covering everyone up. It's fourth down. Steelers have got to convert. Roethlisberger over the middle hits Antonio Holmes. First down Pittsburgh as they stay alive at the Green Bay 46 32 yards. To Santonio Holmes. And this time, with time in the pocket, Roethlisberger is able to find Holmes. Barnett, Nick Barnett, the linebacker, in a pretty good position, but a perfectly thrown ball. We've seen a lot of these from Roethlisberger here today. A career high 449 yards passing for Ben Roethlisberger. These two teams practice against a similar defense they're facing in this game, a 3 4 scheme. And it shows up and down the field. These two offenses have gone. Penalty flag as that ball is knocked into the air by Woodson. Intended for Mike Wallace Holding. nearly picked off. Woodson actually should have intercepted that ball, Joe. We're going to see the, the hold. Now Clay Matthews, who's had a heck of a game as well, and, and, and clearly a hold. But here's the other side of it. Charles Woodson actually plays it pretty well, comes underneath, has got a chance to make a play on the ball. He had one interception last week against the Bears, dropped two others. Well, he could have had another one on that last play. He's got eight on the year, nine takeaways. He is lurking in the secondary for Green Bay. First down and 20. The pass is batted up, picked off. Penalty flag on the play. Heinz Ward is down indicating it's against Green Bay and we'll see. Referee is John Perry. Prior to the pass being thrown illegal contact number 54 defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down Pittsburgh. So another penalty Troy on Brandon Schiller. Yep he's the nickel linebacker and he comes out and knocks Heinz Ward down. And he's also the one who was then able to get a hand on the ball, which led to the interception, but a good call there by the officials. You got McCarthy trying to say the ball was tipped. It wasn't tipped until after Chiller had knocked Ward onto the ground. Pittsburgh has one timeout left. 51 seconds. Have to get it into the end zone. Roethlisberger avoids the sack and throws it away. Two streaks on the line. Mike Tomlin's defending Super Bowl champs trying to avoid their sixth consecutive loss. Ben Roethlisberger, his quarterback, has set a new career high with 449 yards passing. And before the snap. Ball start. Number 78. Offense five yard penalty second down it starts again. Yeah I thought actually they might call that on on Clay Matthews. It looked like he might have got into the neutral zone or maybe it was because of Starks that Matthews is the one but I thought Matthews started first but now you see that Starks he moved that left shoulder and that's what Clay Matthews was cluing on and as soon as Starks moved here he came second down and 15. Over the middle pass incomplete for Heinz Ward and it's Charles Woodson who was there defending and ended up on his stomach and on the grass 39 seconds left and it's third down 
I think Roethlisberger was expecting a little bit more there on the route because they had a chance. There was a nice seam in there behind Charles Woodson. Safety was cheating over the other way in a nice lane, and you know Hines went inside. Well, there was a lot of contact with Charles Woodson. I and mean, Charles Woodson's been called several times, and he got away with one on that play. Third down and 15. Roethlisberger throws and the pass is caught by Heath Miller <laughs> at the 36 and a conversion on third down. Well Jared Bush is underneath this route in a great position and it looked like the ball wouldn't well it was a perfectly thrown ball. Initially I thought that Jared Bush might have been able to make a play on that ball but Ben turned it loose and put it up high and it's a wonder that Heath Miller was able to, to get around and locate that and make the catch. Heath Miller has had a tremendous game. Six catches, 103 yards. 32 seconds left. Jenkins coming and gets the sack. A penalty flag comes in. Colin Jenkins got there, but a flag thrown on the play. Holding number 26 defense five yard penalty from the end of the run automatic first down oh, that's an extra defensive back Josh Bell. Well there it is he you got Holmes trying to come out of the route and and Bell has got a hold on him and Colin Jenkins I mean he had done a nice job on his part coming in and then getting Roethlisberger to the ground and you know, this is hard on those big guys. You see Jenkins there at the defensive end position just goes right around Starks. You know getting there is one thing and then the hard part's getting Ben to the ground but you know to have to continually come with the pass rush these guys are starting to get a little gassed up front. Three penalties on this drive against Green Bay. They are the most penalized team in the NFL. Gives Pittsburgh another first down Roethlisberger. With time, throws, completes Heath Miller. First down inside the 20. And Pittsburgh will use their final timeout. 18 seconds left. Now for Ben Roethlisberger, a franchise record 484 yards passing against the Packers, a team that came in number three defending the pass this season. 18 seconds left, no timeouts. <laughs> Roethlisberger slings it incomplete for Mike Wallace. That would have been interesting because if Mike Wallace catches that ball, he likely does not get into the end zone. And then they would have to run up and then spike the ball, which they would have had time to do that and would have, would have given one more play. But right there, the Packers were in a good position if he was able to make that catch to get him to the ground. But right now, with the amount of time that's left, anything over the middle of the field with the clock still running, they're going to have a hard time getting up to the line to clock it. Second down. Roethlisberger gets away from Colin Jenkins. Buys time, throws out of the back of the end zone. And now three seconds remain. We're down to the final play. And Ben Roethlisberger, who has the biggest passing day of any quarterback in the league this season, 484 yards passing against Green Bay, will have one more try. And even that play right there he thought he would throw it in a position to give his guy and only his guy an opportunity to make the play and you know, just a ball that was a little too high but this is it right here. Roethlisberger throws end zone. Touchdown Mike Wallace 
with no time left. That ties it with the extra point to come. We're tied at 36. Well, they go after Josh Bell. He was active last week for the first time all season. He's one on one on Mike Wallace, and he's in a good position. But, you know, Wallace is looking back for the ball. Roethlisberger knows it's one on one. He puts it on his back shoulder, and Wallace comes back and makes the play. A heck of a job of knowing where he was and keeping his feet in bounds. It's like Santonio Holmes in the Super Bowl. Just did keep his feet inbounds, made the catch falling out. They're going to look at it, but it looked like with every replay we've had, Mike Wallace. We're in a booth review. Every look confirms the touchdown, but we'll get the official call as you look at the effort by Mike Wallace. Tapping the toes down, making the catch, falling out of bounds. Touchdown was the call. Here comes John Perry. Reviewing the play, the play stands as called. Touchdown. By the rule, by the rule, we will extend the game to the point after the score. And because the Packers were good on the two point try, it comes down to the extra point by Jeff Reed, who has not missed one this season. Mike Tomlin can breathe a sigh of relief as he doesn't have to really worry about answering the questions about an odd onside kick try with a two point lead. This to win it. Steelers win. Their losing streak is over.